what is your, what is your status now? I am still um, actively in the military, and I pers I'm going to pursue my career and go all the way through. I was just actually promoted to a major, so I'm very proud of that. Um, and I'm going to keep up the fight. Military has been very supportive of everything that I've done because it's been a good story. It shows that gay soldiers are no different than straight soldiers, and we can do just as good of a job. And they're they're forbidden to give us the benefits because of DOMA. So that's why we're fighting this. That's why we're on this fight. The military wants to extend the benefits if they could, but they're not allowed by federal law. And could you talk a little bit about, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, exactly what you have done in the military? I mean, we're talking about combat situations and sure. and, and your, your elbow to elbow with straight guys and what that's been like over the years? You know, it's, it's an interesting thing. Um, I went in in high school, so it's been over 24 years. I was one of the first people that went to Iraq originally in Desert Storm. So we were the first people over there, and ironically, I was one of the last people out in 2010. So we shut down. We were part of the people that shut down the military. So I've had a really long span of 20 years uh, with my service to Iraq. And, um, you know, so many times, I can't, like, in Desert Storm, I remember that I used to be in artillery, so we would actually, I would be driving a track, and I remember that it's one of the terms in my life when I came to terms with my, my actual homosexuality is that I was, I was sitting there and a, it wasn't a mortar, it was an actual artillery round that hit on the left side and then it hit on the right side and it meant they were homing in on you. And I remember thinking this is it because this, this is something that's going to happen to us. And I looked in my track where I had a picture of my family and I had my brother and his girlfriend that were in this picture. And that's when I really came to terms with the fact that I've never lived my life honestly or openly. I've always had to lie about it. I came to terms with myself thinking that this was it. And so I vowed at that moment that I was never going to lie about who I was again and, and basically didn't. I came out in my personal life, but I always had to lie to the military. I've had to go through my house. What Mr. Santorum does not know is that this is not about sex. There was no question about sex. The question was I would go through my own house and I would hide pictures of us on vacations because military people, my friends, would come over and visit. And that's how invasive Don't Ask, Don't Tell was to us. It wasn't anything about treating anybody differently in the military. Everything's professional. We do everything professional. My soldiers have been so supportive of me. The military itself, their PAO came to me and said, you know, after he heard the story and heard the stuff that I've gone through and hiding pictures, he said, you know, I think that you should tell your story. You absolutely people should understand what this was like to serve under. And I think that we've done a really good job. People are starting to get that. America is on the right side of history. Ohio now is on the right side of history that we're, we're deciding not to treat people like second-class citizens. And I think that we're just now realizing that we're only halfway there, that, that if something had happened to me or Josh while I was in Iraq, I might not have been able to go home and bury him if he had been in a car wreck because he's considered a friend. And that is just so not respectful of the people that have given our lives to our country. Everybody get, sacrifices a lot when we serve our country. Gay people have sacrificed so much more because just to be able to serve their country, they've had to lie and, and make up fake pictures and fake names. and It's just ridiculous. And so that's why we really feel like that we need to fight this fight. We're 20 years, or I'm sorry, we're 50 years behind our civil rights movement. We're just now allowed to serve in the military and we still can't get married. And, you know, segregation in the military ended in the late 40s. Interracial marriage was not, you know, it's not kosher to say that you can't get married anymore in the late 60s. And here we are 50 years, a half a century later, we're fighting for these same civil rights. What was that mental, emotional process like for you when you guys realized you were in love, you wanted to advance, but yet you're still in the military? How do I deal with those? You know, I mean, nobody can understand what it's like to send somebody off to war. Josh and I had to, there's two things we had to do. First thing is that we had to have my parents pull up because he dropped us off at the drill hall before we left. And my parents had to pull behind a crane and hide our minivan there so I could hug Josh goodbye. And that just feels so humiliating to you. You know, you're saying goodbye. This could be our last goodbye to each other. We love each other. This could be our last, last goodbye. Our emotions are the same as any straight emotions. So we said goodbye in humiliation behind this, this crane as my parents looked on. And you just feel like this is just so wrong. Then at the airport, um, because I got to see him on leave right before we actually shipped out for Iraq, all the soldiers were there greeting their families. They were hugging. The spouses were all together, and they were saying, you know, here's my phone number. I know we're going to have to go through this. It's going to be really hard. Josh and I hid behind an escalator, and we were sitting there bawling together, 
saying goodbye, worrying that somebody might see two guys crying, and how do we explain that? And it's just such an additional burden of stress that nobody can ever understand. So, I mean, when we got married on our leave, you know, I could have still gotten kicked out. Don't ask, don't tell, it not been repealed. But we got married, I knew that they weren't pursuing it anymore. And it was terrifying when I came back to Iraq and they said, oh, you know, we're going to fight to kick you people out. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. That just doesn't seem fair. After 24 years of devotion to my country and, and giving everything that I can for the military, that just didn't seem right. And I didn't want to do it. Uh, I wanted to do it anonymously at first, but I thought this, whole, this question needs to be asked. People need to see that we are over there fighting for our country right now. They need to see that. That's what happened, basically. So the, it's hard. It's very, very hard. It's a long-winded answer. Sorry. Where, where are you from in Ohio? Uh, originally from Upper Sandusky, um, but we live in Columbus. That's where our home is. Us and our two dogs and our cat. <laughs> Hey, can, can we get an update on the signature drive? How, how far along are you? Are you halfway there? Three-fourths? One-third? Some kind of rough idea, at least? Well, you know, we've been um, in, in the field collecting signatures for you know, a good part of a year, and I can tell you that every day uh, we continue to gather more signatures, especially on the weekends. We have been collecting in every part of the state. Um, yesterday, people were in Cincinnati. I was up in Lorain County. Uh, you know, this past weekend, people were in Athens County, up at, at Bowling Green, and in, in Lucas County. So, although I'm not going to give you any particular numbers, I can tell you that uh, we have signatures from each of the 88 counties. We have volunteers in each of the 88 counties, and that we are continuing to amass more signatures um, all the time. Is your goal still to be on the ballot this year? The, the, the decision about uh, being on the ballot will be made uh, at the appropriate time based on the number of signatures that we've collected, uh, based on the, num the polling numbers, which are just looking better and better all the time. And so excited to see the recent Washington Post poll with poll numbers showing over 50% of the people in Ohio, even before a campaign has begun, uh, favor marriage equality. And some outstanding poll numbers nationwide showing in, in the 70 percentiles, the number of people that understand that DOMA is discrimination and don't believe that it belongs in American society. And then, you know, of course, we'll, we'll assess it by in terms of the, the finances to make sure that we have a winning campaign. So uh, we'll uh, be sure to let you know, Bill, when we make the decision. Yeah, can, can you tell us how, how confident are you that you would, I understand that the decision isn't just based on whether or not you have enough signatures, but what, how confident are you that you will get have enough signatures by July that you could go to the ballot this year? We can do that. I mean, the, the, you know, we have a great team working on the signatures. We have uh, such a, a wonderful um, leadership in our campaign with Ian James and Stephen Letourneau, who are experts at this petition gathering business and who have. Um, committed substantially to help us obtain this goal. And so we, we have the infrastructure, we have the knowledge and the ability, we have the volunteers. Um, uh, we can get the, the, the number of signatures needed, but we'll make the decision overall. We'll consult with the steering committee and get their advice, and I'm glad that we have strong leadership on the steering committee as well, and on our executive committee, and uh, we'll but, you know, I, I'm very excited at the momentum that this campaign has been showing. And uh, you know, the, the people that are endorsing, the organizations that are endorsing, the volunteers that have joined it, um, it just gets stronger every single day. Steve, could you talk a little bit about, I mean, besides your endorsement of this proposed ballot issue, is there, are you, can you, is there something in particular you're going to be doing uh, in support of getting the signatures or selling it to Ohioans? I mean, we're basically, Josh and I right now are involved in so many initiatives. Um, one of the initiatives that we're involved in is that we're taking a, a couples, 25 couples, that cannot get married legally here and driving them to Washington to the Supreme Court to get married in front of the Supreme Court to basically, number one, make a statement, but number two, to show that in, in 2013, this is, this is how we're treated as second-class citizens. So we're already doing tons of initiatives like that. We're going to do, I, I'm a soldier, 24 years I've been fighting for rights to have everybody have equal rights in America. 
So this is just a natural extension for me to want to fight for my rights, for the first time my rights, and I'm, I'm going to do that. It's going to be working with Freedom Ohio. It's going to be working with our personal initiatives. We're just going to keep up whatever we can do to raise awareness so people understand what, where we're at. So these are Ohio couples you're going to take to it's, Washington? To I'm, let me jo have Josh yeah. talk a little bit about this because... Um, <clears throat> initially, it was the idea was that it would be Ohio couples, um, but it went a little viral. So it spans to uh, Michigan, Illinois, Tennessee, Florida, and Georgia right now. So um, five states outside of Ohio, but a large majority are Ohioans. Um, we launched last Thursday, uh, Valentine's Day, and we're already about full. I think we may have, last I checked, four seats left. So uh, it's really exciting. It was just kind of a an idea that I thought was great uh, that would that would inspire people to get married when they wanted to instead of when they felt like they were allowed to. Um, there's there's this odd kind of mindset, you know, when you live in a state where marriage equality isn't observed that you kind of forget that you can still get married. You know what I mean? You, you sit there. When Stephen and I asked for um, the uh, the exception for his for our marriage license in Washington D.C. because there's a three-day waiting period. A prime example of the mindset that you're in is I called and I said, well, my spouse is, is an active duty service member. It's Monday. There's three days waiting, so we'd have to be back by Friday, but he leaves 6 a.m. for Iraq. Um, can we still get married? And the woman on the phone said, yeah, of course. And I said, oh. She said, yeah, the judge should, should approve that. That should be no problem. You can get an expedited license. And uh, I hung up, and I told Stephen, and I was very excited, and I said, oh, I didn't tell her we were gay. And so I called back, and I told the woman, I said, I forgot to tell you that I'm gay. Is that okay still? And she laughed at me and she says, yeah, that's fine. So there's this mindset that you think because it's not legal in Ohio, it's just not accessible to you, period. And so a lot of couples have been together. Right now, we're surveying the couples and 10 of them have been spoken to and we're already over 100 years of commitment on these couples. So that's an average of 10. And I'll tell you that a large majority of them are like 15 years plus together. So these are couples that have been together that long and still haven't had the chance to marry because they felt like it wasn't available to them. And the minute you put something like this to them, people are flocking and they realize, I can get married today. I can marry the person that I love now instead of waiting. And it, it feels good. So just to be clear, you said something about the Supreme Court. Yeah. You're going to go to the steps of the Supreme Court or outside the Supreme Court to have... The public space. I don't want to say the steps, but yeah. yes, the public space. The public space. Yeah, near the, to, just to make the point that you can't do this in Ohio, but you can do it in D.C. In D.C. And at that time, DOMA will actually probably have either just been decided... Uh, the, two, the two cases that are coming through, or will be in the midst of decision and coming out very shortly. So it's it's in June, June 21st uh, is when we're doing it, and then they're kind of having a weekend here in Columbus, but um, it should be very exciting.